Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usham Motuzaita Pinkavichin. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. Hey guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 576 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Julie. And she writes, I tend to focus too much on what I'm playing on Sunday and don't make as much progress on the bigger pieces that take much longer than a week to learn. Sometimes there isn't much I can do about that if things are particularly busy at work. Also, this challenge seems to be particularly uh, common among uh, liturgical organists, right? Yes, who I, have, I think so, yes. Who have constant uh, duties at church, preparing hymns, preludes, um, and other liturgical music week after week. Um, but but then what comes after that is really hard to learn, right? Uh, after a month or three months from now, a person doesn't have enough time. True. Although I think there are some some solutions that could be you know applied. First of all, you know if you are a church organist. For more than one year, well, each liturgical year has its own, you know, festivities and occasions. And after some time, you will see that you will notice that you know the hymns will come back, and you will be playing the same hymns as you did the last year or the year before that. So I guess you know after knowing your hymnal really well, it. It doesn't take so so long, you know, to prepare hymns for Sunday. And the same with, you know, preludes and postludes. You don't need, you know, to play a new things every Sunday. Maybe, you know, you can repeat some of older pieces after some time. And, you know, you can alternate between them, so... That will save time too. This situation kind of reminds me of uh, your school work and preparation for it. Uh, how much time did you have to spend in your first or second year? A lot. Many hours. Many it hours. Me many hours yes. mm -hmm. Half an hour for each lesson? Class? Yes, for when I work for the first year, probably, mm -hmm. yes. And you were teaching like maybe 20 or more classes every week? Yes, around that. I started with 18 hours per week and then I had more. Mm -hmm. But then the second year, did you notice some things got easier? Well, some things, but still it was quite hard. Obviously because the course had more, was more advanced, right? Yes. 11th grade. You started from the 10th grade, then 11th grade? Well, I have taught since, you know, the fifth grade, uh -huh. then I just started to work, so. And then the third year afterwards, it got even more complex, right? With, True. With 12th grade harmony. But when did you start to notice things to be repeating and uh, your skill level and experience level uh, helping you out in this? Well, I guess after five years, five. I already noticed it, you know. I wonder how long Julie is working in church and um, and is she having a five year experience or not? But now it takes me one hour you know for to prepare for entire week so mm -hmm. at the very most. So I would imagine with your experience um, a person who would you know play a church for a decade or more. Uh, they could simply practice those hymns and uh, liturgical music and preludes uh, one hour 
in in advance, maybe on Saturday evening, right? Yes, and when we are talking about problems like this, I just don't think how blessed are the organists who, you know, can improvise, how much time we can save. Yes, that's a great idea. So, Julia, I think Oshra is suggesting you to Im- improvise or yes. or uh, do some kind of um, combination of uh, repertoire playing and improvisation, right? At first, you will you will be very um, you will feel like um, you you are a beginner at this inadequate skills, right? It's like uh, like starting to play the organ from the f- from the scratch from scratch. But little by little, after a year or two, you will get more experience. And another thing, you know, if you are working on the larger scale repertoire for, let's say, a recital, you could, you know, integrate some of, of that music into a liturgical service as well. Maybe not to play an entire piece, but maybe just to play an episode out of it. And finish with a nice cadence. I know. And that was, you know, that we you would win both ways, you know, you would add to your larger repertoire and you would, you know, fill in your service. Yes, I know what you mean. It's like a, a, like a cycle. Prelude and fugue has two parts, right? You could play the prelude in the beginning and fugue at the end. But That's still a lot. You know, still a music, lot. Yes. So what you could do to play just the prelude, but split it in two parts, and finish it um, um, with a nice final cadence, maybe with extension uh, towards subdominant key at the end and coming back to the to the tonic. And then that this would be your prelude, half of the actual prelude. And then the other half could be repeated after the service, maybe starting with, with some kind of gradual introduction so that you could... Um, drive into this postlude uh, gradually, you know, musically in an aesthetically pleasing way. Yes, that's a good suggestion. This requires obviously harmony skills, maybe, maybe music theory skills, and even a little bit more experience. But the general suggestion could be like this: yeah, incorporate your bigger works into the liturgy. And of course, when you know picking up uh, larger pieces for your recitals, you could think about that too. If we are strate- strategically would you know fit into the service music, because obviously there are lots of organ repertoire that could be easily you know included into a service music. Let's see, partitas, Bachel bells partitas, or you know Bach's partitas. We work just just well, you know, and these are. You know, segmented pieces, so you wouldn't need to worry about making up the cadences. And in general, I think you have to ha- gather more and more repertoire, so that when the time time comes for you to play in public, let's say a recital, uh, then you don't have to learn everything from scratch. But as also says, uh, learn just one or two pieces from scratch and repeat everything else this this uh, this time and next time y- you can learn two more pieces and repeat everything else you see and you gradually will uh, supplant your repertoire refresh your repertoire this way but won't overextend yourself that's right yeah and that's our suggestions for, for, for this question, I think. And they should be helpful for people, right, Osha? Yes, I hope so. Mm-hmm. So, guys, please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. This was with us. And Osha. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This podcast is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program on planet. It has hundreds of courses, coaching and practice materials for every area of organ playing, thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. 
total organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, develop your sight reading skills, and improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. If you like our organ music, you can also support us on Patreon and get free CDs. Find out more at patreon.com slash secrets of organ playing.